Welcome to First Down Sports. As always, I'm your host, Ray Dunn. Sitting right beside me is my uh, little brother, Chris. How's it going, eh? He's not that little. <laughs> On the far right of the table, or left, my left, your right, is you know our buddy, Jeff Wood. Welcome Bye. back, Jeff. Thanks for having me, guys. Baba boy. Over here on my right, your left, is our guest tonight, Troy Howe, first time at First Down Sports. Welcome, Troy. Thank hey, you, guys. Hey. Look forward to it. Welcome. Thank you. Beauty, eh? <clears throat> Lastly, I made a huge mistake last week, and I can't make that same mistake, so I want to uh, introduce, at the back of the room, my little brother, Nikki Dunn. Oh, I'm back. Oh. <laughs> Nikki. <laughs> Nikki. Little Nikki. Little Nikki. He's so cute. <laughs> Before we get started here, I have to send a big uh, shout out to our sponsors, Moose Light. If you're going to get uh, some beer on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, whatever day of the week, make sure you get Moose Light. It's scary good. Cherry it's boy. scary good. Oh, scary. Plus, I can't forget uh, our good buddies, the Doyles. You need hats, shirts, pens, pants, whatever it is, go see the Doyle brothers at Doyle's Corporate Image. They're going to look after you. Doyle rules. Doyle rules. Okay, so getting into the show here, guys, we're going to start real quick. On Friday, we went to watch the Innovative Wrestling uh, here in Moncton on Friday night. They gave us free tickets, uh, so we went on behalf of First Down Sports. It was fantastic. What a great show. Uh, in fact, I've got a couple wrestlers that are booked. They're going to be coming on our show in the near future, so that will be a lot of fun. Get the tables. Uh, and, flex, flex. Yeah, the maybe tables. We'll, and, and who knows? Maybe we'll be practicing our figure fours and all that stuff. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> Unlike when Michael Landsberg used to have the wrestlers on, on Off the Record, and he had them out of character, we're going to have them in character. I want to have the wrestlers nice. come on full, in character, right? Character. I want them trash talking. Right from, I, I, I want the whole thing. So <laughs> look forward to that. But because I went to that wrestling show, it really got me pumped up for wrestling. I ended up ordering WrestleMania this year. So WrestleMania 3, uh, they had a record-breaking attendance at the Orlando Camping Ground of... Uh, 72, well, oh. it's called Orlando's Camping World Stadium. They had 72,000 plus people there. Jeez. $14.5 million in revenue. Wow. Wrestling's still a big thing, sport right? Sport. right? I haven't Huge. really watched wrestling since Stone Cold's been out, but it's still big. Wow. It's still big. Good for the spandex industry. <laughs> For, yeah, good for the spandex industry, and 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 the knee high boots yeah, and the knee high boots, boots. Yeah. tassels. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So my big question, you guys, is this: um, for this week in history, I want to just talk about wrestling for a second. When you look back on WrestleMania, what wrestler has performed the most in WrestleMania history? Think about that one for a second. The most. The most. Wow. What wrestler has wrestled the most WrestleManias? Most Oh, yeah. most WrestleManias. He's been in the most WrestleManias. Uh, I'd say The Undertaker. Very good. Last well done. Sunday night was his 25th Definitely. time in, 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 in uh, WrestleMania. And you want to take a shot at what his record is? Oh, jeez. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Got like, so got just this. WrestleManias? Just WrestleManias. What's his record in WrestleManias? He's been in how many WrestleManias? 25. 21 and 4. 23 and 2. Ooh, he just nice. he lost to Roman wow. Reigns this week. Uh, prior to that, he'd only Brutal. lost one time. They keep, they keep trying to push that guy. Yeah. Wow. Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar are the two wrestlers that beat The Undertaker, and both of them won their matches this week. The only, th the only thing I know about uh, up-to-date wrestling is Roman Reigns is the most hated wrestler to the wrestling fans because mm -hmm. they keep trying to force-feed these, these fans out. And they can't stand him. Well, I, I, thought he was, I thought he was good. Yeah. I thought he was good. Outside The Undertaker, you got Triple H with 21 times. Kane and Shawn Michaels tied with 17. Shawn now, they call Shawn Michaels Mr. WrestleMania, but his record in WrestleMania is a 6 and 11. Jeez, that's I mean, brutal. how does oh. he get Mr. WrestleMania? Wow. <laughs> Wasn't liked by the fans enough. <laughs> Super kick. Fan hey? Didn't rig it for him to win enough. <laughs> yeah. He's a, he, there's another count. He, he's he's yeah. a pretty he might boy. Have won that one. He's a pretty boy. <laughs> pretty boy. All right, guys. Before we move on to the show, uh, on with the rest of the show here, I just want to give out a quick shout out. Okay, you'll notice I haven't mentioned a name this week. Um, our former producer Jason Derosh. 
Darosh? Darosh? Darosh. Did Darosh. I finally get it right? Darosh. Jason has had to step away from the show. Um, so I just want to give you... A, when we started out this podcast, we started out in my office, up in my office slash studio, and Jason came on board in late November, December, and helped us out with a few shows. And very shortly into that, we ended up going live from Fox and the Hound, and Jay helped transition us to live, which was not easy. By yeah, any means, it was all. not easy. After three shows at the Fox, may have been three or four, then we transitioned back to uh, a full studio here in my basement. We've played with the set a few times. So Jay's been, ever since Jay's been involved with First Down Sports, it's been nothing but transition. It was not an easy, we've had a couple bumps along the way, but Jay, we would not be where we are today without your support and help. So I want to send you out a big shout out. Thank you and, and keep up the fight with what you're fighting. All right? Miss you, buddy. All right, okay. let's move on. I've got some, just real quick. Today we are talking major, mm -hmm. major league golf. Okay, that's what we're here to talk about today. We have two of Moncton's top golfers right here sitting at this table. Well, I would say one. All right. Oh, oh right. Right. it's on. Right. It's on. Right. I like it. I like it. I like it. This is why I'm getting right. so far. You must be talking about me. Yeah, I'm getting so far apart. <laughs> But before we get into the golf subjects, there's three subjects that we would not be doing our job if we didn't talk about it. So first off, just real quick, guys, the NHL has decided they're not going to Seoul, Korea uh, for the Olympics. What's your thoughts on this? Should they or should they not be going? Top, I think they should be. I think it's, you know, that's a huge level to grow the game on. But I would say the owners had a big say in this uh, behind the scenes because of injuries. Yeah. Um, but you've seen a couple of the big guys speak out today. Ovechkin says he's going anyways. And Crosby thinks they made the wrong decision. So I think it needs to be there for the, for the game, for the younger levels. But I can see from a financial standpoint from the owners, they're worried about injuries. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I would say the same thing. Jeff yeah. kind of said for the, just for the game, to grow the game. Uh, yeah wider it's it's funny I, I listened to an interview today and they have no details and the ioc will not release information to uh the nhl as far as the numbers as far as what you know what they what they had for viewership during the olympics so they don't know true numbers if it's actually helped grow the game but you think of where the nhl was coming out of the strike i think the olympics has really helped make uh, hockey relevant again. Exactly. It's my two cents. And not only that, but during the Olympics, you want to have the best. Put you want to have the best athletes in the world competing. I don't care if they're pro, amateur, whatever the case would be. I want to see the best athletes competing against mm. each other. They should be there. I, I think Ovechkin said he came out and said that uh, he thinks this is a kind of a stunt, it's kind of a publicity thing. He doesn't think that the NHL is going to actually go through this. One of the guys, I'm not sure which uh, NHL said NHLer said it, but he said. You know what? Why don't we just cancel? We won't go to the Canada Cup. The Canada Cup was brought back from the NHL, mm. and the NHL makes money off it. Yeah. <clears throat> so if they can do the vice versa, like if we're not going to the Olympics, then we're not going to do the Canada Cup either. Yeah. You know, I think there's if, uh, the NHLPA is not going to allow this to happen. I think there's going to be a lot of volleying back and forth. But I think once we get closer to that timeline, I think that's going to be a vol like, It'll be back to normal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Tony Romo. Uh oh. Tony Romo has officially been released by the Dallas Cowboys and has signed. It was supposed to be announced today. He was outside in a, in a CBS jacket, but he is going on with CBS. He's taking over for Phil Sims in the number one uh, position with the TV crew, which does not happen. Athletes do not come out from playing and go to the number one position. He chose CBS over Fox because... Troy Aikman is that number one guy and will be that number one guy for years to come. And with CBS, he gets the opportunity to speak. He's going to get the opportunity to do football as well as golf. What's your thoughts there? If you don't mind, Any guys. chance of him well, coming back? Chris, Chris and Andy made a huge bet today. Tell them about your bet, Chris. And I'll well, I thought this would maybe cause a little dialogue. So I bet, I bet before this all happened early that I said Romo was not going to retire. He was not going to go to broadcasting. I thought it was kind of maybe more, it could have been a ploy. Now, to be right on the record, I was more of 70% he was going to retire. 30% I thought this is kind of a ploy. He kind of dickered around from the, from Dallas. You know, the last low, the low stuff is on, on April 3rd. You see uh, uh, Jerry Jones on, on April 3rd 
You see, uh, uh, Jerry Jones comes out and says, hey, you can go visit any team to go see if you're healthy, but you can't negotiate anything and you can't talk. That's kind of just dangling them around. I thought it was a, it was a ploy to say, no, I'm retired. I'm taking away the whole value. No one, no one's going to trade for me now because I'm saying that I'm retired. So I kind of thought it was more of that. I do think the right amount of money, right now he is a broadcaster, the right amount of money could bring him back. I don't know. It's it's uh, Tony's. You know, what is he? Thirty eight. Thirty eight. I mean, he, he's getting up there. He's going to turn his attention to uh, uh, golf now. They, Tony's a very good golfer. Loves to play. Yep. Um, I think they had a uh, a lot of talk behind the scenes, um, probably with his family and that, being with his back injuries. And and I think the only place he was going was a contender for sure. And it didn't work out. You know, behind in the dress room and that behind the scenes and. Well, I think Jerry Jones had a, uh, a bit to yeah. play with that there. Yeah. See, see, my problem with this, why I think he's still going to be coming back, is he said he was. He, there was rumors that tech, he was going to. He would. Uh, he would love to go to Texas to be the uh, part of the Texans team. Place to be. But it's either that or I retire. Yep. Mm. And then yep. Jerry Jones is still trying to get some value from the trade. You know, if you look at it, if he wanted to only go to one team. Then he's going through all this nonsense. Let's say the Browns, for God's sakes, the Browns sends him a, a good trade. Then he'd have to go there, go through a whole bunch of drama about yeah. saying, I'm not playing there, now I'm going to retire. It's just, it, I think that's why I thought there was more to this, that he was going to use this more of a leveraging. But I think the right amount of money maybe said, you know what, now I'm here. Maybe now I am going to do this. But the Texans need somebody. They got Savage and they got... Weeden, yeah. yeah, Savage and Weeden. Yeah, All right, I hate to cut you up, but we got to move. We got lots of stuff here tonight. Uh, MLB season started this week. Um, Jays started out in Baltimore. They lost three two in extra innings. Yeah, um, but the Jays looked really good. Now here's some interesting things. So we're watching the game last night, and our, our we have a new guy that's going to be joining us in the background uh, very shortly. He's already playing a role right now. His name's Andy Jardine, and you guys are all going to learn more about Andy as we go. Andy, watching the game last night, he's obviously not a big fan of uh, Jose Bautista because he was ripping on Bautista like crazy, <laughs> saying how terrible of a player he is, and you know he's had terrible stats, his errors, and all that. And Andy, I just want you to know, I mean, other than the fact he made that huge catch in right field last night, I did a little stats myself, and in 2016... Uh, Bautista only had two fielding errors for the year. Andy, you should know that. You should know that. I mean, you've got a blog. And in 2015, <laughs> in 2015, Way Bautista back. played 118 games in right field, and he only had three errors. Andy, so, come on, buddy. I don't wow. know where wow. you're going off about Bautista being such a terrible player. This may, the, uh, this argument may have been reversed. This could have been Andy's actually argument. <laughs> and Ray could have been the other one arguing the other way. I don't know what but you're talking about. But for now, about. since Andy can't defend himself, I'm, I'm supporting Ray. I'm the host of the show, and I'm telling you, if this is how, if this is how I see it happen, it, it happened that way. Right? It's happened. <laughs> so there's our three topics for you. We've got a long baseball season ahead of us. We're going to be talking a lot of Jays down the road, so we're not going to get into it tonight. There's lots of stuff to talk about, but we have to get into the Masters, guys. Yeah. There's so much to talk about here. Um, I really want to put out a big promotion for our pool again. Make sure if you haven't gotten to our website, firstdownsports.com backslash contest, you can get all the information on our master's pool. Ten bucks. Ten bucks. Great pool, Lots guys. of prizes. I'm going to recap all the prizes at the end here. But I want to go through this pool with these two golf experts here. And one. First Down Sports. One, apparently. Yeah, one. First one. Down Sports is going to be putting in a team based on this discussion tonight, okay? So let's start off in box one. Box one, we got Dustin Johnson, Rory McIlroy, Jordan Spieth, Jason Day. Now, I've been recording all the picks coming in from the players so far. A lot of people are leaning towards Dustin Johnson, but I will tell you there's been a trend starting for Spieth later this afternoon. So what do you guys think here? What, you know, what, what should we be leaning towards? For those people out there that don't know anything about golf, where should, be, where should they be aiming for here? Well, you know, it's funny. The, Dustin's obviously playing at an extremely high level. Yeah. Um, Augusta National requires... A very, very good short game, which Jordan Spieth has. You see his finishes last three years, second, first, second, and he had a huge lead last year, and, you know, he had the hiccup on 12 and kind of faltered. But 
it's hard to say that Rory McIlroy's kind of flying under the radar because DJ's got so much attention on him, and of course there's a speed factor. So, and then you've got Jason Day who plays at Augusta extremely well. Um, he's been dealing with some personal stuff and hasn't played a lot, but uh, I like Rory. Rory's kind of flying under the radar. Great course from hits it high, hits it long. No, and um, <laughs> no, you know that's why there's one golfer up here. <laughs> No, you know, Rory, uh, I hear what you're saying, but the, the one guy that I want to touch on first is Jason Day. Like I was watching the, when I was home at lunch today, I was watching TS or uh, the Golf Channel, and Jason has zero confidence in his game right now. He even said he's I'm, I'm basically not not prepared. So you can take him right out of the equation, in my opinion, because at Augusta you got to be mentally oh, super yeah. mentally tough, and your game's got to be on point. Yeah. He admitted his game's not on point, and he's just basically going to go through the motions and and see what happens. So Jason Day, we're taken out of the picture. In my opinion, I think Jason, unless something miraculous happens, but miraculous things really don't happen at, at Augusta. Okay, you, you got to play your way around the golf course. Okay, my pick uh, on one of my one of my sheets here is definitely Jordan Spieth, just based on his track record. Uh, I picked one pool with a certain system in mind, and then my second my second team is a is a heartfelt team. Oh, nice. Um, so I feel Jordan Spieth. He's going to take it down, Dustin. Yeah, he hits it far, but uh, he's won three out of the. He's won three of the last four tournaments. He, he's so got momentum, but he's got momentum. But it's a different. It's, it's tougher. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. So, what do you think, Chris? Based on that discussion, who are we going with? Uh, you know, I was I was look, I'm leaning towards always going to the top because golf is not my my forte. But I, I, I remember reading that uh, for a first place person to win, uh, being ranked number one. For them to win this tournament is very rare. Tiger Woods was the only one that did it. That do it. I like Jordan. I like Jordan. All right, we'll take speed. Yeah. All right, next box. So we got uh, Mats. I always screw this up. Matsuyama. 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 Adam Scott, Rose, and my boy Ricky Fowler. What do you guys I'm think? I'm going Ricky Fowler. Ricky I mean, Fowler. He's, he's I love Ricky Fowler. On side. He's got good history at Augusta. He's I think number one in scrambling. Uh, and that's what you need around Augusta. Ricky Fowler. Good pick. He's 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 number one in scrambling right now. Um, playing well. He's got a lot of confidence. Do you, uh, you had, know a, had, had a great third round last yeah. week. Yeah, great. Eight or nine birdies. And uh, But I'm going with a guy that's playing very well this year. Uh, he's got a great track record at Augusta. He's always there. He plays great when the conditions are tough. He's always there when the, when the winners, you know, my, single digits in, in the minus or around even. I'm going with Rosie. Rosie. All right. I'm going to take Ricky on this one, Chris. But the only thing that I'm concerned about with Ricky is the fact that he has been struggling on the Sundays. His, his Sunday rounds have not been smooth. He plays great on the weekend, but come Sunday, even look at this past tournament, he had a great Saturday. He caught up. He was he was at minus 8, caught up to minus 16, and then Sunday he comes out and shoots 6 over in the first four holes. So, yeah. you know, like I'm Matt a little Zuma. worried about Ricky. Yeah. I like Matsuyama. Don't forget about Matsuyama. Just because of his name. Very That's good. why he stayed away from it. Then, we got, then we got away. Stenson, Mickelson, Bubba Watson, Sergio Garcia. We got two former master champions in that bracket. Mickelson's 46 years old this year. Uh, Troy, you started out that last one. Let's go down to Woodsy. Uh, it is hard for me not to go with lefty, obviously, uh, being a lefty. And Phil, I mean, it's hard not to cheer for him. Um, but I don't know. The conditions are supposed to be tough Thursday, Friday. It's going to be a little cooler. It's going to be windy. Uh, Stenson's got a pretty good record. I'm going Stenson. The ball striker is. I'm not a big fan of his short game. He won at the British Open. The greens are a little bit slower. Mm. Um, but he's such a good ball striker. Okay. I'm going Henrik. I, I, I was leaning towards Henrik or Phil in this one. Uh, Sergio, being a great player, I don't believe he can, he can win at the Masters. That's just my opinion. I'm going to go with Phil just based on experience. Okay. And he's he's been there before. Jack actually said today that Phil's game at 46 was better than Jack's when Jack won yes, at 46. Yes, I, so I saw that too. Watch. And I also agree. Phil, I mean, Phil's... Yeah, he's, he's great. How many top tens has he already had this yeah. year? And right? under that bracket, and he loves he's this got place. the most experience in yeah. that bracket. Yeah, he loves this What place. do you think, Chris? Same thing. All right, we're going Phil. Lefty. All right. Now, this bracket, I love the looks of this bracket. We got Patrick Reed, Danny Willett, Justin Thomas, uh, Thomas Peters. What do you think here? 
And if there's one bracket I made a mistake, I should have Will It out of here and John Ram in here. Yeah. That's the only w- thing I wish I could change on this pool. Yeah. What do you think, Troy? I, I picked Justin Thomas. Um, I just think young guy. I think he's uh, he's playing well. And uh, I don't know. I just out of out of all the three, I I, I don't think Will It's gonna repeat very well personally. Um, Patrick Reed doesn't have a good record at Augusta. I'm going with Thomas. Okay. What do you got there, Woodsy? Uh, we're on the same level on that one. I, I like Justin Thomas on that one as well. Okay. Um, Thomas, P- Thomas Peters is a, a great young player. He bombs it. It's he a can good course bomb for him, it. but I like JT. I don't, I, I'm the same as Troy. I don't think Danny will, will, uh. I, I really thought Patrick Reed was, I, 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 I really thought Patrick Reed, Reed was going to play really well in the, uh, match play at the, uh, WPC, but he didn't have it. I, Right out of the gate, and we're going to talk about James Duffy. I I told James Duffy we were emailing back and forth that I think Patrick Reed could be the Masters winner. Now I said that a couple of weeks ago. Oof. I thought that he was trending well, but then he didn't play well in the match play. Now I'm not 100 percent sure about Patrick, but my heart is Patrick Reed. Well, I was going to say if you didn't pick him as a Buffalo uh, Bills fan. I see Reed on the paper. I take Reed. <laughs> All right, we're taking <laughs> Reed. We're taking Patrick Reed. He's not winning. He's not winning. That's going to be the worst pick so far. All right. Paul Casey, <laughs> Schnedeker, <laughs> Kucher, Grace. What do you got, Woodsy? Uh, this one, another good bracket. Uh, Paul Casey's a great world-class player. Plays unbelievable at the Masters every yeah, year. He's every always year. there. Consistent. Um, Cooch. I like Cooch. Grace, good. I'm going with uh, I'm going with Sned. He's kind of got his game in form. He's working with his coach. He gets it right to left now, which is good at Augusta. Yeah. And Sned says the short game, and yeah. you need the short game at Augusta. Just watching Jordan Speed and the guys that have won. Mm. I picked. Uh, I'm picking Paul Casey again. I, I this pick was all all uh, a system that I that I went through based based on a few things, but mainly, system. Do you hear that, people? Mainly, yeah. Uh, Mainly the records there, and Paul Casey. What was he? T three last year. T four. He's always, he was, he's, he's always he's up there. T ten. T five. And uh, I, I like experience is key at uh, at, at Augusta. Yeah. For you, for your non golf player, T is tied. Okay, just to, <laughs> we're getting technical up on the stage here. All right, Chris, what are we going? We going Casey or Snedeker? Well, what do you want to do? To win at golf, what do you need a lot of? Beer, Turkey. and you need to yeah. have a little bit of grace, you know. You need oh, grace. You know? nice place for so, that. A lot of I grace in Augusta. I call a grace on this. One. Um, I don't know. Feeling? John Daly doesn't have a whole lot Nick, of grace. But <laughs> Nick, he seemed to have done pretty well for did, himself. Did, did you hear Chris say he needs grace on the golf course? <laughs> have you? Has, have any of you? <laughs> All right, played with Chris. <laughs> yeah, we, we'll get we'll get back yeah, to that later. Never won There's no beer card All right, we got next box. We got uh, Byung Hung <laughs> An. William McGirt, Daniel Berger, McGirt. and our buddy John Ram that we've been talking about. Yeah, this is a good little bracket. What do you got there, Hal? My heart wanted to go. My heart went uh, Berger on my second pool, but uh, but just the momentum and he blasted John Ram. Yeah. What do you got? Uh, I'm with Troy. He's he's uh, he's arguably the best young player in tour yeah. right now. He's had yeah. a great start to this year. He's got he's got he's got it all, and you know what? He doesn't have experience, which Troy is right. You need some experience because you got to know what you're doing around the greens here. But this kid is special. Yeah. And I think he's gonna. I was kind of leaning with Troy on Berger, but I'm going with Ram. I, I I'm gonna go with him too. Uh, McGirt's got a little bit of momentum too yeah. for him right now. Yeah. Right, but Berger, uh, Berger as well. The way this Ram kid played in that match uh, tournament, uh, I've got to go with him. Team Ramrod with him. All right, yeah. with that movie, Team Ramrod. We go Ramrod all the way. All right, here we go. We got <laughs> Kevin Na, Ryan Moore, Kevin yeah. Chapel, yeah. and Jason <laughs> Duffner. You're up, Woodsy. Uh, I'm going uh, the guy that used to wear the tie when he played. I'm going with Moore. Moore, uh, all I right. Can't, I can't take Kevin. No, I mean uh, I'd go crazy playing in a group with him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kevin Chapel, good ball striker. Yeah. Duffner. I mean Duffner is a world class player. He's kind of fallen off last couple of years. Unless the course gets a little firmer and fast for Duffy, I just don't think Duff hits it far enough to contend with the uh, the yeah. guys. I'm going more. Okay. Yeah, I I, I pick more as well. Um, just his his demeanor, how he works his way around the golf course. He's methodical. He's uh, he thinks his way around the course pretty well, and uh, I, I like more there. Same okay. same okay. with Jeff Kevin. Uh, I I couldn't couldn't stand playing golf with that guy. Okay. He's too nervous. 
No, yeah. Like, I say Dave Ch Ch Chappelle came back, so could Kevin. Chappelle. All right, we're going with Chappelle. Kevin, Kevin yeah. Chappelle. Oh, uh, there's All right. no accent. That's Chapel. Chapel. I know. Okay. That, that's okay, what it looks sure. like to me. We'll Boys, we're gonna, not a big golf fan. <laughs> we're, we're halfway through and we're almost at our time limit, so we're gonna go through these boxes a little quicker. So we got okay. Louis Ustazen, former winner. Fitzpatrick, Walker, and Bill Haas. Start down here with Troy. Fitzpatrick. Green Fitzpatrick. Horn, uh, sleeper pick. Okay, what do you got there? Took the words out of my mouth. Totally agree. He played well there last wow, year. Wow, nice. Rory took him under his wing. He bought a home in Florida. He's going to play over here more. Fitz is, uh, I like Fitz too. Awesome. Johnny Walker's brother, right on Jimmy. Man, you got the winning team for sure. Right <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, I should have thought twice before. <laughs> oh. This all makes sense. All right. You watch, you watch. Swartzel, Had Hadwin. <laughs> Webb Simpson and Charlie Hoffman. Chris, I'm going to point out no Hadwin's Canadian. No brainer. Hadwin. I'm going with experience here with uh, Schwartzel. I mean, it, it would be nice to pick a Canadian, but uh, Webb Simpson's ever since the putter, the, the rule change with the putter has not been great. Hoffman plays good. I don't know how well he's going to play at Augusta, but Schwartzel's won it before. Yeah. World class player. Okay. I'm going Schwartz. Yeah. Well, you're not very patriotic, are you, Jeff? <laughs> I was born I'm in the not, U.S. just to let uh, everyone actually, know. That's so, yeah, I forgot about that. I went with the Canadian. Adam had one. Right. Awesome. How could you not pick somebody with the, with the actual word win in it? Exactly. Had win. All right. So win. Chris, like, who are you picking here, Chris? Yeah, win. We, it says win right in the you're, you're going with the Canadian? Yeah. Oh, so you're, 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 agreeing, oh, with my, uh, you're agreeing with my whole <laughs> pick Canadians to win championships. <laughs> you hear that? There you go. Yeah. Glad we finally agree on says something. It says win in it. <laughs> <laughs> J.B. Holmes, Mackenzie Hughes, Brandon Steele, uh, Hudson Swafford, Woodsy. Well, I know what you guys are going since, you know, who you went with last box, but uh, I'm going J.B. J.B.? No yeah. explanation. I, uh, JB. I pick J.B. as well. Now, a lot of people are picking J.B. right across the board uh, in the pool, but what about Mackenzie Hughes here? No experience. No experience. That's, 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 uh, Hudson Swafford might be a little sleeper. Swafford's a yeah. great young player. Hits it far. Um, you know, we know right, what you guys are going. We well, well, a quick I, I, decision. I play ice hockey with a guy named Greg Hughes. He's got great hands. All right. Let's go with Hughes. Let's go with Hughes. Great hands. Like As you can see, we're donating 10 bucks, people. All right. <laughs> Bernie <laughs> Ells, Martin Keimer, <laughs> Russell Knox, and C. Woo Kim. Uh, Troy, you're up. Well, I, I'm going to go with uh, with Russell Russell Knox. Um, I was going to go Martin Keimer at first, but, but I'm going to go with no explanation, Russell Knox. Russell Knox. Yeah, I don't have much explanation either. I was kind of thinking Keimer too, but... Um what was it five six years ago and he he made his mark on the in the world class but he hasn't done much since look at his there. rankings in Augusta is terrible and it's not good so you know what I don't think there's a guy named C Woo Kim on the Buffalo Bills so I'm going C Woo Kim <laughs> <laughs> I am I'm picking this box I'm taking Russell Knox I won with Russell Knox the in the last pool I ever played against Peter Jennings I won with uh, with WrestleMania Russell that Knox. just went by you're not going to pick a guy that has Woo in the name no I'm Woo! going Russell Knox very nice Woo <laughs> we're, we're not going to give uh, a, a certain disclaimer here and I'm see what happens. Sort of we're going to go Tiger Woods, Ian Woosnam, Shane Lowry, and Mark Leisham. I'm going. Leishman. Uh, Leishman. I'm going. I'm going. Leishman. He, Leishman. he plays well at Augusta. He's already won this year. Yeah. Um, he's got a lot of good stuff going on right now. And in that. Leishman. And in that box. Yeah. Uh, he's. He'll be the best him or, player. Him or Lowry. Okay. Lowry Wait, might be okay there. But. Well, we, we passed on the other Woo, so why don't we go with Ian Woosman? You're Ian Woo Woosman. All right, we got Woo That Woosman. might be the worst pick of the day. <laughs> That's the definitely the so worst so far. <laughs> if we win, you get a hope. All right, for a lot of Woo! All right, now we've got the uh, the older guys coming yeah, back here. We, we got go. Cabrera, Convention. we got Omero, we got Mikey Weir, and Freddie Couples. As much as I want to pick another Canadian, I love Angel Cabrera. I love his golf game. Yeah. That's it. And he still plays like kind of like well. Mickelson. And like he plays talked, Augusta right? really well. He does. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go uh, just to mix it up a little bit. I'm going with Freddie, but yeah. I wanted to go on how the guy's. He doesn't practice. He's got ultra talent. He's won yeah. it before. Smoked cigars on the range. He's he's just the guy's an awesome talent. <laughs> he, he's an awesome talent. But I, in my pick here, I'm taking Freddie Couples. 
He's a fan favorite of mine. So we have Weir. Come on. No. Mike Weir. No. Sorry, where is he? Hey, Sorry. <laughs> What's that? Right. Even, even though my brother buys all your clothes at Sears, um, uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm going with couples. <laughs> <laughs> there we got Brooks Ooh. Copia, Ooh. Zach Johnson, Lee Westwood, and Tyrell Hatton. Lee Who's... West. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> nice. Troy gets a woo in there. That was nice. great. That was great. Uh, Westwood. I. You know what? If there's an if there's a an, a middle aged sleeper, it's Westwood to win Augusta because he, he does play well at Augusta. He does. Yeah. He just can't finish it off. No, hundred percent. I feel bad for the guy. He, he's been there so many times, and his putter's going the other way now. He's not a good putter, which does not uh, obviously help you at Worst Augusta. chicken wings playing in yeah, PGA. But he gets it done, and he, <laughs> he plays does. Augusta Unreal. Yeah. I wanted to go with Zach Johnson, but I'm a little bit worried with his length. I'm going with a guy that's not playing good, but it kind of suits his eye because of his length. I'm going Brooks Kepka. Kepka. Mm. Nice, nice. Woo! All right, Chris, what do you got? I'm going to give you this box here. So I'm going to take that one? I don't really have a lot. How about uh, Terrell Hatton? Oh, Hatton. Let's do that. All right. There's you heard it right there. There's got to be a Hatton on the 53-man yeah. roster of Buffalo Summer. He's got to yeah. be. He's a linebacker. All right. He's a linebacker. Last, 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 last box, we got, our, we got our Masters Amateurs coming up. We got yeah. Curtis Lux, Scott Gregory, Toto Ganya, right. and Brad Dolph. There's only one thing you can say about this box. Good luck. Good yeah. luck. Good luck. Good yeah. luck, Mr. Luck. It's the only reason why I pick him. Uh, yeah, I had to do a lot of research in this box and, you know, Wikipedia and all that stuff, but I'm going, uh, like, he's a top-ranked amateur, and he's, amateurs don't normally do too well at, at, at Augusta, but I'm, go, I'm going with luck. Right. What, what do you guys I'm going to give you this final box here, Chris, because right? it's a crapshoot. Anything yeah, can happen. Anything can happen. style. Okay. Yeah. You want to go Ganyan yeah. style, yeah. right? Whoop him, Ganyan style. Whoop, 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 whoop. whoop, 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 whoop. whoop. All right, that's our uh, our, that's our Masters pool. So just to recap, the uh, first down sports team, we got Spieth, Fowler, Mickelson, Reed, Grace, Ram, Chapel, Walker, Hadwin, Hughes, Knox, Woosman, Woo. Freddie Couples, Worst Hatton, and Whoopum Gannam style. <laughs> Wisdom yeah, equals Woosman. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Winning score. Let's just do winning scores. So what's your I'll winning score? Minus 12. Minus 12. What's your winning score down there, Jeff? I'm saying minus 7. Minus 7? Uh, Why don't we go right in between? Well, yeah, we do Price is Right. All right, yeah. Price is Right. Just go a little. <laughs> do, I think, do we, did they overbid on this? No, I, I think they're right. I say minus, minus, I say minus, minus, minus 13. Minus 13. Minus 12. Minus 12. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Minus 13. Minus yeah. 13. We're taking that. There's your first down sports team. All right. Good team. That's our that's our recap of the pool, guys. Again, we'll we'll give more details on this at the end. All right. Yeah. Here we go, guys. We are now going to start our Masters Tournament Trivia. This is a competition between our two pros here. This should to be find This out, could be embarrassing. To find out I guess who is the best uh, pro my brother Chris is going to be tracking the score here. We're going to be getting updates as we go. These guys are going to be writing down their answers, showing it to you on the camera, and we'll go from there. Now, this was a game when I was hoping Ray Dunn Sr. would call in. We just couldn't make it happen. So it's between our two pros here, okay? I okay. can give half points anytime I want. Okay. Okay. Good. So, true or, this is a true or false question to start you out, okay? Tiger Woods is the only player to win the Masters in back-to-back -back years. True or false? Thirty seconds on the clock. Dee 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 dee. Heavy writing over here. Dee dee. What do we got? What do we got? We got false here. True here. The answer is false. Ah, yeah. Nick Faldo won in 89 and 1990. Back to back years. You should know that. Troy's Terrible. up. One nothing. Bogey. He got a bogey. A bogey. Oh, bogey. Got a bogey by <laughs> Woody. That's a penalty. Just so you know, my wife, Jeannie, she swears by one, Troy. She says she, he, he's the only guy that can coach her. Uh, to her game. Exactly. So exactly. She, has, you know, she has that lesson for me then. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one bogey. All that. right, here we go. Question number two, true or false. Phil Mickelson won the Masters in 2004 and 2006. It was Canadian Mike Weir that split up those wins. True or false? Do, 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 do. 
The sound effects on this show. <laughs> and we got false there and false there. All right, guys, who was it? Who was it that split up? Who, who, who did Phil put a jacket on and then that person had to put the jacket back on Phil? Jeez, was it 2005? You know who it was. Come line? on, no, you guys know who it was. No, it was Tiger Woods. Tiger. Tiger oh, Woods. Right, yeah. Tiger Woods. Ugh. All right, here we go. True or false? So par is on that. Last year's winner, Danny Willett, is the only is only the third Englishman to ever win the Masters. Danny Willett is only the third Englishman to ever win the Masters. That's, I should have went with the odds, yeah. but it's probably true. False and true. The answer is false. Wow, he's only the oh. second player. Nick Faldo oh. won the Masters three times. The oh, three times. Birdie, them. I was thinking Woosnam yeah. for some uh -oh. reason. Birdie and Bogey. Woo! Yeah. Woosnam. <laughs> Birdie and Bogey. Nice. Come on, All level. <laughs> All right, here we go. The U.S. has uh, the U.S. leads by a, a landslide with 59 Master wins and this number of total wins. Okay. Oh, this number of total winners. Okay, let me read that again. The U.S. Yeah, the good. U.S. leads the way by a landslide of 59 master wins, with only this number of winners: 41 winners, 36 winners, 28 winners, or 11 winners from the U.S. To win the Masters. To win the Masters. How many guys have won the Masters? So what was 40, the 11. 41. 36. 28. Or 11. I hate these, these types of trivia questions. All right, what do we got? 28. 28 and 36. Well, you should have known to go with my football referee number. 36 is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sending me the <laughs> trivia before we got started. Right? <laughs> well, if anybody watches me ref football, you'd know I'm number 36. Guess up by one stroke. <laughs> All right. Mighty drive. Check that out. It's a mighty drive. All right, here we go. True or false? The Masters was called off for three years during the years of 1943, 1944, and 1945 due to World War II. True or false? <laughs> what do we got? True, true. true. It is true. Pars. Bunch of pars. He's holding them off. The first Masters was played in 1934. Okay, we're going way back here. Who won that tournament? Was it Bobby Jones, Ben Hogan, Horton Smith, or Byron Nelson? 1934. Oh, what do we got? Horton. Horton. Nice. Good job, boys. Good job. I didn't think he had that one, Woody. Wow, that was really good. Really good. Bars. Wow. He obviously went on Wikipedia before he came here. <laughs> <laughs> there was a little... We didn't get much work done this afternoon. <laughs> there was a little master. There was a lot of cars being sold this afternoon. <laughs> hold, hold number seven. Hold All right, hold number seven. Guys. This player has the most top tens with 22 and the most cuts made with 37. Arnold Palmer. Tiger Woods, Jack Nicholas, or Horton Smith? What do we got? Jack, Jack, that's the right answer. Gotta be Jack. <laughs> What's the score, Chris? We need a score yeah. update here. Right, right now, down, we're, Jeff is minus two, Troy's minus one. Okay, boy, right. we got three holes Let's left. Away. Three right. holes left. This is Woo! a big one coming up here. Question number coming eight. down the stretch. The course record for Augusta is... 63, 64, or 59? The course record? Yeah. What's the course record for Augusta? 63, 64, or 59? Oh, these guys are going in there. Wow. That's pretty good because, see, my football referee number is 36. Backward. You're back around. Around. It's 63. There you go. There you go. Does anyone really care about the referee's number? Can we talk about the referee's He's number? He's just another zebra. <laughs> Two questions left. Here, here we go. These two players hold the record for 63, the lowest round at Augusta. Tiger Woods and Arnold Palmer. Gary Player and Phil Mickelson. 
Nick Price and Greg Norman, or Jack Nicholas and Tiger Woods. So Tiger and Arnold, Gary and Phil, Nick and Greg, and Jack and Tiger. Tiger and Jack, Fick, Price and Norman. It's Price and Norman. Oh, no. Woody was the winner yeah. of the Master <laughs> Trivia Challenge. Yes, Woo, that's crazy. Dormy. It was crazy. a Dormy. My under? You're it. That's it. That was Dormy. That was nice. it. All right, I'm gonna, give you, I'm gonna give you one question. Here's the final question. All my caddies. Final question. Final question. This player holds the record for the most appearances at the Masters tournament. We got Ben Hogan, Jack Nicholas, Arnold Palmer, Gary Player, or Phil the Thrill Mickelson. Most appearances in the Masters. <laughs> what do we got? Player? Arnie? You're not going to believe this, Hal. It's Gary Player! Oh, oh my god! god. Yeah. 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 What a smackdown! What a smackdown! No. Before we start Jamie this competition. For a lesson. <laughs> Before we start this competition, we have two jackets now we want to uh. present. Uh, Chris, you want to present the winner's jacket first? Absolutely. All right. This is a very special jacket. This is what we call the uh, Maritime Cup oh, jacket. Yeah. It was a jacket that my brother and I won in a big tournament against Peter Jennings and uh, Paul Curry. A lot of history in this jacket. A lot jacket. of history in uh -oh. this jacket. That this ain't this might be like Tommy Boy a little bit. Oh, oh, is, that, is that a European <laughs> cut? <laughs> movie, Tommy Boy? Is that a European <laughs> cut jacket? Uh-oh. Yeah, it, just put it on for a second, just there so the camera can see it. Look at a picture. Good. Nice jacket. Looks like what? the guy from uh, Hotels.com. And, 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 and our loser in tonight's competition is going to get what we call the golden shower jacket. What's that smell? It's still wet. Yeah. Don't, don't worry about the smell. It's, it's all good. It's a little damp. <laughs> <laughs> so there's our, there's our uh, master, our first our master <laughs> trivia jacket. All right, thanks guys for playing that. That was fantastic. Now, let's get into our final subject here before we uh, get out here tonight. We got to talk about some crazy golf rules. Yeah. Okay, because if there's one thing about the sport of golf that drives me crazy, it's the rules that we have to deal with on the course. Okay. Let's talk about what happened to Lexi Thompson this week. So Lexi goes out, plays a round on Saturday. On Sunday, during the round on Sunday, a, an official comes out on the course to let her know she's being penalized two strokes for the way she put the ball onto the green on, a, on the Saturday round, as well as she was deducted another two strokes for signing a scorecard that was false. Added two strokes. Or added two, you know, yeah. whatever. So she lost four strokes in the middle of the round on Sunday for something that happened on Saturday. And what makes this even worse, if you remember what happened to Tiger of the Masters, it all happened because some fan called into the TV station to let them know this error took place. Yeah. What is going on with the go rules of golf? It's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And, and I actually think it wasn't a call-in. It was an, actually an email. An email. They were going through the email. It was an email. So... You know, I mean, the debate is armchair refer referees. I mean, golf, I said to Woody there, I think yesterday or earlier today, golf is the only sport where you, you, you referee yourself. And unlike other sports like baseball or football or hockey, you're all in one arena. Golf, you're all over the golf course. Just like cyclists, runners, you know, you're, you're, you're Spread playing out. by the rules, rules of golf and governing yeah. yourself. If you can't have the camera on every single person... At every single time, you can't, you can't you can't have these call-ins. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's just not fair. That's no, right. Yeah. And uh, it, it's it's ridiculous. Okay. What it do you got? Ten seconds. What do you think? One hundred percent. It's uh, it puts another black cloud over golf for sure. It's uh, I feel bad for Lex. She, she held it with a ton of class, but you know, I said this to a guy at work asked me about this actually yesterday, and if they were to go back and go through. Every single tournament round for, I don't know, what, 10 years since HDTV or whatever's come out, 
And as Phil said today, you watch where uh, pros place their marker and put the ball back down. You, that opens up a whole can of worms. It could be on slick greens. They can't get the ball to sit. They move it a bit. It's, it, it, you know, and to be able to call in and then the governing bodies accept it a day after when it's a major. Brutal. Um, share this podcast with everyone, guys. It's, you know, it's a major championship, Lexi Thompson. It's too bad. Hopefully she'll bat it, which she will. Yeah, Dustin super, Johnson super. came back. It's uh, <clears throat> Bill said today she should be, be awarded the trophy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to give you guys four rules scenarios now, okay? Um, we have somebody sitting at this table where rules are very creative on the golf course. So we're going to talk about some rules here. We're going to get that person's opinion, and then we're going to go to our pros here to tell us what actually should be taking place, okay? <laughs> so first scenario is you drive your ball down the left-hand side into the rough, and when you get up to your ball, you find it's just out of bounds past the white stakes. So it's out of bounds. So, Chris, what I want to know is, tell me what the ruling is on that scenario. It's out of bounds. It's out of bounds? So what do you do? Well, you gotta, you got to bring it back and you got to hit it again. Okay. Now or, what, or, or drop, I guess. Right. What would the real Chris Dunn do on the course? Of well, if we're, if we're doing fun golf, you hit it, you play it. Uh, so if you see it, you play yeah, it. That's right. You see it, you play it. <laughs> if you can find it, play it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. I love that. That's, that's great pace yeah. of play. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so pace, keeps the pace of play. But it's yeah. against the rule. <laughs> it's against the rule. It's against the rule. It's a major How many times does that happen over you see the ball, people play it. No? Yeah. Recreational golf happens all the time. That's probably why handicaps are a little bit... Now, uh, now, well, Nick, for... Nick, we're talking about fun <laughs> rules here. In all the years that you ever played with Chris, has he ever did anything other than... Uh, like his first answer where he said you, you, it's out of bounds. Have you ever seen that? Never. Never. Never? <laughs> what about Never. what about he goes into the woods with a top flight and a that ball on the green? Oh, hold on. That's, that's another scenario. That's another scenario. <laughs> so, All right. It's interesting you bring this one up because this is how they're picking up the speed of play. Is they're, they're actually taking out of bounds out yep. and right. putting red stakes. Yes. Right. So, so now you can, you yes. can play there it, you but go. you can't ground your club. But you can't ground like, oh, so you're you're you can All white like stakes are yeah. red stakes to you. You're 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 guys, <laughs> yeah. You guys are you're stealing my thunder for number three here. Wait, I was progressive. I saw this coming. Yeah. Yeah. See, There's really, a group on the T-Wave. Right. All right. right. This here we go. This is that email in Here's Here's scenario number two, okay, Chris? You hit your ball just short of the green, and it's plugged into the side of a water hazard. As the water is low in the pond, you can still see your ball, but it's inside the hazard in the wall and not in the water. I can honestly say this is what going to are, happen. What are you going to do on this particular well, point? Well, you can't move it. Okay. I, I'd say it's, it's probably a water hazard, I'd probably venture to say, but I'd say if I see it, I'm hitting that sucker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, hold on here. Are you, taking, are you going to say, well, you know... You can't play that. You get to pull that out. No. Put it. Are you going to hit it right where Your, it is? Yours is all all summer long. It fall fall rules. No, well, I would hit. I would hit that sucker right where it is. Okay. Nick, in your scenario, in, in, I got to go to Nick here. In your history of playing with Chris, would that be what's taking place here? Yes. <laughs> you hit it. You hit it. It's a creative shot. If I hit that, that's awesome. Yeah. All right, boys. Now I'm going to go to <laughs> Jeff on this one. What's what's your actual options in this scenario? Well, if it's you can play it. Okay. If you can get at it, you can play it. Yeah. But I think you have to be able to clarify that it's your ball first if you decide to play it. I could be wrong, but yeah, it, that's wrong. It is wrong. Yeah, it's in a hazard, so you don't you don't you don't have to identify your ball in a, in a hazard. So there because you it can be buried. That's, you know what? Also. You just there got. You. A plus one. I might oh, 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 oh. <laughs> We could be We're switching narrow yeah, You could be we switching could be jackets. Scared. I hope so because it's a little stinky. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, here we go. Now you guys kind of stole my thunder on this one. You hit your ball into the woods that has red stakes down the tree line. You actually find your ball, but it's under light tree branches. Yeah. What are your options you can't here? Can't move it. Can't, huh? We can't move stuff. Oh, wait, wait. Okay, so the ball, the ball is covered. The, the the branch, the light tree branches are over top of your ball. I think, from what I recall from seeing on the PGA, now I would take the light stuff off. I wouldn't take anything in front 
But if there's light stuff on it, I would take it off it. Okay. You must have a really good handicap, do you? You can't touch it at all. You can't touch it at all. You can't move it. You can't move it. You can't improve your life. If but it so, has but no, but if, it, if there's a branch over your ball, can't touch you can't it. touch it. Okay. You can't touch you it. You can't play Not it. Not in hazard, device. yeah. Now, so now, what if he's in the woods with no stakes? Uh, yes, you can move uh, what they call loose impediments, which would be branches or rocks, but so maybe that's the ball okay. cannot move. So sure red the ball stakes, doesn't move. You can't, you you can't hit touch it no matter what. Yep. 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 Okay. Uh, or you have options as well. I mean, you don't have to hit it. You can take a penalty stroke and and move it two club lengths outside the red uh, the red hazard stake line, no closer to the hole under one penalty stroke. Okay. There we go. Awesome. Good job. Right. I mean, we're learning. We're improving my job. We're learning. Yeah, yeah. 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 By the way, I've got some uh, business cards there for the lessons in the pocket there. So when yeah, you that's a plus yeah, one. Another that's a plus one. And it's going to be free. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. Now we got a Bonus. minus two. There you go. we got a minus two. <laughs> do you, right, don't you, you want a lesson from the winner of that? Here we go. Next one here. So you find, you, now you uh, you have found the green on your approach shot and are approximately 15 feet from the hole, which uh, we know this is hypothetical. Your opponent just comes up short of the green and is approximately 10 feet from the hole. Who plays first? Say that. So, so you have yeah. found the green. You're 15 feet from the hole. Yeah. On the green. Your opponent on the green. On, on the green. green. Yeah, yeah. Your opponent has come up short. He's in the fringe. Ten feet from the hole, who plays first? The back guy, the guy on the fringe. The guy on the fringe? Yeah. All right. Jeff, what do you got here? Uh, he's further depends away. Depends on the order. You can. He, he's on the fringe? He's on the fringe. He's ten feet from the hole. He's on the green 15 feet from the hole. Who's going first? I'm closer, is what he's saying. Guy from the fringe. No, no, you're further away. You're oh, away. I, I missed, you're I away. Said, yeah, I'll, I'll you're 15 it. feet from the hole. Horribly. He's uh, uh, this 10 is, feet this should from be the hole. a uh, penalty right here. No, let me read it. this again. Okay. You have found the green on your approach and are approximately 15 feet am from I, the am hole. Am I further away or is he further away? You're further you're away on the green. Feet. You're further away on the green. On the green. On the you're fringe. on the green. Then it's he's my, he's I, on the fringe. Then I put first. Why? Why? Because I think the fringe is still in that. No, it's not. No, it's whoever's furthest away from the hole. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you're on the green or off the green. It's whoever's mm -hmm. furthest away from okay. the hole. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then I know that. Yeah. Now, wasn't there something at one point that if you use if if the guy off the green's using his wedge, isn't it only if he's putting that that uh, wasn't there a no. rule at some point? I looked into that after. No. Right. Never heard of that. No. Okay. Whoever's furthest, furthest away. away. Doesn't matter doesn't what matter. club you're using. Yeah. Yeah. On men's just, night at one point, I had some guy argue that with me, that because he's using a wedge, he got to play first. Anyways. Well, now you can go to him and say he's wrong. No, I'm wrong. wrong. I'm wrong. All right. Here we go. With a W. This is the final one, and I'm sure this has never happened before. I'm sure this has never <laughs> happened before. Your opponent tees off with an ultra four. Ultra. And First of all, if he's playing an ultra, he's playing with him. Man, <laughs> all right, hold on here. We're not finished. <laughs> and on the green, you now notice that he's putting with a pro staff three. What should you do in this scenario? Call the beer card over for another round. <laughs> Give for sure. Give him my uh, business card. Yeah. First. As a guy that doesn't have to think uh, that there's a conspiracy, I'd come up and say, hey, did you change your ball? I'd give you the benefit of the doubt. And I'd let you say to produce the other ultra. So if you produce the ultra, I, I putt with this one. I, I, I strike the ball in this one. I'd give him the benefit of the doubt. I would give him a ball and ask him to put it in his pocket and see if it rolled down his pant leg. And then he realizes there's a thing. All right, try it. Try it. Now, do you want to set the record straight here? In this scenario, what 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 kind of fouls take place? There's a lot of fouls. There's a lot of infractions. Yeah, you need a rules of bishop for that one. You gotta you gotta finish the hole with the ball you start with. First, okay. First of all. And uh, you're definitely not buying that guy a beer at the, no. at the 19th hole. Because <laughs> if he's it. done it then, he's done it a few holes before, no, I'm no. sure. Question, though, because this, this debunks a lot of the stuff that Ray, Ray Susie starts losing. He looks for anything to try to call you out. So yeah. if I start losing, off, hold on here. I I, 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 can't I, don't, I don't hey, recall you losing. Get, I, I am the Division II uh, Men's oh, League yeah, Championship yeah, yeah. at Mount Wood. Two championships for two golf tournaments. <laughs> that was your show. Woo! <laughs> So, so if you have a ball, and I, I'm on hole one, I have a ball, then I go into my other pocket, I tee off with this ball, and I finish off that hole. That, is that a penalty? 
Can, right. I, can, I, switch, can I switch? Can I switch? You mean switching balls between the holes? In between yeah. holes. Oh, sure. Yeah. sure. So uh, that's yeah. the majority of the times he gets into. Do you hold have hold this? Trey, he, what if you what if you're wearing cargo pants and in your side pocket you've got five different balls, five different <laughs> brands with five different marks on them? Is that allowed on golf? As long as they stay in your pocket. That's it. <laughs> First of all, you didn't pass the dress code, so you're not on the I might go first. Why are you wearing cargo pants? Yeah. 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 Fine the and important. Yeah. Now, listen, now that I plant them, I put a marker on the ball now, assign it, because he probably wants to keep it at the you're end. You're all when set. When he loses. Yeah, when but, he loses, but he's got five it. different golf balls with the same no, signature. No, no, what I he does is he takes I the signature sure. and he su he puts the signature over the logo, so you can't, <laughs> can't see, see what kind of ball it is. It might be okay, though, this summer. Maybe you might have a lot of moose-like golf balls. Then you can just have the different numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they yeah. don't know. Five, I four... I say Most before, right before there. the summer's out, we're going to have to take this to, to record how bad I beat my brother. <laughs> I oh, can't be a fortune. All right? And how mad yeah. he gets. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Good we're going to play by those before us and see you guys. Then I, get, then I get the championship belt that he's talking about, and I get to go around with it. Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> that is our rules <laughs> trivia, guys. Um, and again, before we get out of here, Jeff, I want to welcome you back first down. Thanks for coming, Thanks Troy. Thanks for having me again. Thanks. Anytime yeah, we're talking golf, Good I want you on the show. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome job. Buddy. In the, next, <laughs> in the next two weeks, guys, we got some exciting guests. Next week, we have Mark Crandall coming on. He's going to be talking about uh, the uh, Moncton Mustangs football, as well as he'll be talking about a new project he's got going on called Jockbox. Wait to hear about this. And two weeks from tonight... We got TSN's James Duffy coming on to the show. Nice. Nice. We are going Duffer. to be having a great in-depth conversation with James, get to <laughs> hear what it's like to actually work for TSN. That's going to be a great that's interview. Be awesome. yeah. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Before I skip out of here, I want to remind you again to check out our master pool and put in a team. It's only $10. Ten bucks, boys. Listen Ten bucks. to the prizes, okay? We got four green fees and two power cards for Mountain Woods. There's 300 bucks right there. We got four green fees to Royal Oaks. There's close to 400 bucks. Four green fees to Lakeside. Again, 250 bucks right there. Done right Buffalo sauce. We got a full package for you. That's about $500 worth of product there. <laughs> for all your tasting oh, needs. That's, that's not. We, right. we, we got a lesson from Troy Howe here. We got some uh, Goga Yoga. Goga Yoga. It's go, uh, yoga for golfers, golf right? And yoga, yeah. All yoga right. For That's golfers. cool. We've got a great certificate for you from there. Doyle's Corporation has a great shirt. We got tons of Moose Light products. Oh, I'm covered. Go to our website, firstdownsports.com backslash contest. <laughs> Check out our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and you guys have a great week. Enjoy the Masters. Enjoy the Woo! Masters. Master! Get a moose light! Ah, a little light! Good job, boys! Yeah, boys! Good job, 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 boys! I'm going to get around this summer to see it. it. might be a long round with all these penalty impressions. Welcome back to the tee. Wrong goal. I want you to... to, to.